Welcome to the Talk About Podcast. I'm your host, TW. Let's get it. I don't want to kiss you. Let's just keep it simple. I'll fall in love. I just keep it simple. Thank you all so much for taking the time out to enjoy the show and listen to it, stream it, watch it, download it, however you are consuming uh, the show. This is Talk About Podcast coming to you as part of the Impact Lounge. And before we get started, please uh, just take a second and go ahead and hit that like button, whether you listen to it on SoundCloud or uh, you can leave a review on iTunes. Um, if you listen to it through a Facebook group, you can go ahead and drop your comments. I'll be sure to respond to them, let you know what I think about what you think about what I think okay and uh, if you like the show and you want to show some love you can definitely go to the SoundCloud page and drop that little PayPal donation if you want to um, yeah that's just how we're getting down over here so listen it's like week five of the uh, coronavirus quarantine 2020 baby and uh, here's five things I already know number one Hate it or love it. Wrestling without fans is here for the foreseeable future. And I can't lie. I kind of like it. I, I mean, growing up watching WWE, it shows you how much everything they do is designed to get a crowd reaction and to play to a crowd. Listen, wrestling was designed as something for an audience, right? So obviously the show, uh, the, the excuse me, the whole art form is designed as a performance for fans. But... WWE has been close to unwatchable without fans in attendance. That's how dependent they are, how reliant they are on the fans. AEW has done so much better uh, with their shows without having fans in. Now, they've been cheating a little bit because they've actually had wrestlers kind of along the uh, the, the ringside to add some noise and add some reaction. Um, and WWE has not had that. Maybe they should try it. Number two, Opportunity knocks. Is Impact going to answer? Like I already said, WWE and AEW, they're already taping weeks in advance of their wrestling in closed sets with no fans. And let's be honest, if you're an Impact fan, it's not like the fans are really going to be missed. I mean, they don't like the fans, so you can't see them. They don't mic the fans, so you can barely hear them. And when they cut the show's audio, you can barely hear the fans over the commentary. So sometimes it seems like there's no fans there anyway. But I digress. The point is, all three of these shows are now going to be coming to you for weeks on end for the foreseeable future in these from these closed sets with no fans in attendance. So, to me, that puts all the shows kind of on an equal playing field. Because if you're seeing a clip circulating of of AEW and a clip circulating of you know Monday Night Raw and SmackDown, you're seeing a clip circulating of Impact, and all of these are being shot from the same angle to uh, minimize the look of having no fans in attendance, and it's really just going to focus on the wrestling that's happening in the ring, the the way that the commentators are selling it, you know, all the little tricks and tips that production can do to kind of make the show look better. So this is a huge opportunity for Impact. You got a chance to actually look comparable to WWE. When did you think you would say that? Impact is going to look comparable to WWE. And if I'm an Impact talent or I'm an Impact producer, I'm looking at this as a huge opportunity to have my product compared to WWE in a way that it hasn't been before and may never be again, right? So if your Impact sees the moment. MVP, MVP, MVP. Sammy Callahan right now is clearly Impact Wrestling's MVP. In an era in which almost nobody changes their character anymore, Sammy Callahan has dug up his old Solomon Crow character from uh, NXT and basically kind of reinvented it, grunged it up for Impact, and he's executing this character, according to his interview with Chris Van Vliet, this is the way that he wanted it to come off over in NXT, but they never really got behind it. And as you're seeing more and more, Sammy Callahan is actually a really creative dude, and I'm, you know... I'm more and more interested the more and more involved I know he is because 
the way they ended that last episode of Impact, if you haven't seen it, um, today is, by the time you hear this, it's going to be at least Thursday. So if you haven't seen it on uh, on Twitch or on Access, you're waiting for it to come on the Impact Plus app. Maybe you haven't seen it yet. But the end of the show is bonkers. Like the way they set it up, the way they shoot it, just the concepts is all really crazy and it's all really dope. And if you look at how many spots Sammy Callahan is in the show, how many things that are happening on the show that involve him right now, nobody else is doing what he's doing. Look at it like this. He's flushing out this new character, so we're trying to figure out what it is. What is this ICU thing? What does it mean? You know, this this whole hacker thing. You know, what can he do? What can he do? What all does it entail? Ken Shamrock, he's supposed to be the newest inductee into the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame, but he also has to get through his beef with Sammy Callahan, right? OVE. What is OVE going to do without their leader? Is Sammy still in OVE? Is Sammy out of OVE? Is somebody else in OVE going to step up? All of these things on the show have Sammy Callahan's fingerprints all over them. And so right now, you know, that's like, gosh, that's, what is that, like half of the storylines even happening on the show right now? So if you were giving out, a, 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 we're not even in June, but a quarter of the way of the year, an MVP for Impact Wrestling, hands down, it's got to be Sammy. The tag division just might be back. I don't want to jump the gun. I want to be too premature here. But the Impact Wrestling Tag Team Division just might be back. Now, we saw last week, they did a segment in the Rascals Treehouse where they had the Rascals, the Deaners, TJP and Fala Ba, and, uh, oh, Double XL, all in the Treehouse. Then, you know, you also have the Desi Hit Squad. They weren't on the show uh, they weren't in that segment, but they've been around so much that you know they're not gone. They're still there. So you have those guys. And, oh, yeah, don't forget about the tag team champions, the North, who got a huge win last week over uh, Tessa Blanchard and Eddie Edwards in the main event of the show. I thought that was a just like, a, you know, that really established them as a top act. If you watch WWE shows, they will take their tag team champions and have them lose to a makeshift pairing of two guys fighting for the top championship all the time. And what does it tell you? It tells you that the tag teams don't matter, and it tells you that the tag teams are not on the same level as the guys who are fighting for the title. It'll be like Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman, or you know, uh, or, or you know, Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens, and these 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 thrown together tag teams will just beat the tag team champions all the time and again it really weakens the way the tag teams look and so by having the north go against the two people who two of the three people who are going to be going for the world title at the next upcoming special and having the tag team champions go over strong to me that does wonders for establishing the fact that the north are the real deal and in a tag team situation you're not going to beat these guys so the Impact Tag Division has a chance to be really, really strong. Um, hopefully, they don't rush it. Hopefully, they don't do a bunch of multi-team matches. You got a chance to have, you know, two, three, four different uh, tag team feuds happening all at once. A bunch of unique matches. A bunch of, you know, tag team wrestling is naturally set up to be exciting just by the nature of you got four people at any given time. And, you know, these are four... You know, not the Deaners and not the Desi Hit Squad, but these are the rest of these acts are all relatively fresh and have all been kept relatively strong. So there's a lot of potential with this tag team division. Impact, don't let me down. It is time to X the X division. Listen, I know if you're a TNA diehard, you're a TNA fan for a long time. That is not what you want to hear. Oh, we love the X Division. AJ Styles and Daniels and Samoa Joe. They had this great match this one time. And Christopher Saban and all these guys. Oh, it was so great. And Jerry Lynn. And, like, <laughs> look, that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. And that's just not the case anymore. And that's not what this division is anymore. And that's not what this company is anymore. The X Division made sense. At a time when the guys wrestling in the main event were the bigger guys who wrestled a more slow, 
plotting, methodical style. But if everybody is wrestling that fast-paced, high-flying, no-sell style, then nobody's wrestling that style, right? If everybody's X Division, nobody's X Division. And right now, there's no X Division. Right now is the part of the show where I'm going to say some things you might not like. I'm going to say some things that might get you riled up, that might make you feel some type of way. <laughs> listen, listen. I don't care, okay? I'm going to say the things that you might not want to hear, but you know what? You need to hear them. You need to hear it. And if you don't like what I got to say, then guess what? Come at me, bro. Come at me, sis. Come at me, non-discriminate, -dis you know, gender fluid person. Come at me. Come at me. It's all good. Okay, because I, I'm here for this. If you don't like what I got to say and you got something to say to me and you want me to say something back to you and even if you don't want me to say something back to you, I probably will anyway. Because guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Are you guessing? Are you guessing? Guess what? Listen, I want the smoke. I want all the smoke. You bring it. You got it. You bring it. I want it. All right. And here's what we going here's what we going to smoke on today. Okay, here's what we going to smoke on today. That X Division Championship that y'all love so much, it's time for it to go. It's time for it to go. Now, a couple of weeks ago, AEW announced that they were having the tournament to crown the first ever TNT champion. And I thought that was just brilliant when I heard it. I thought that was just brilliant. Why did I think that was brilliant? Because... A mid-card title is a great idea. You have so many great talents hanging out in the middle of your card. For example, on Impact, last week, Chris Bay and Daga had one of the best matches on Impact all year. Great match. Right now, Ace Austin, Trey Miguel, Willie Mack, Rich Swan, Moose. There's a lot of great people hanging out in the middle of the card on Impact, and they need something to fight for. But like I said earlier, the X Division is not a thing anymore. So it's time for that X Division title to evolve, okay? The X Division title should go away, and they should replace it with, drum roll please, the old Impact Heavyweight Championship, the old TNA championship belt. They had that TNA championship belt sitting out on the table, on the commentary table, when they did the TNA, uh, not No Place Like Home show, but the, the TNA on Access TV show. And I was like, man, that is a good looking belt. It's a damn shame that belt is just sitting in somebody's storage somewhere. That's a good looking belt. So you should take that belt and since they do such a great job of honoring the history and the legacy that TNA created, turn the X Division Championship into the Total Nonstop Action Championship. That way, you can use the belt. You don't have to change the belt. It says TNA right on it, and you can honor the legacy of TNA, and you have a new mid-card title, a beautiful belt that looks so much better than all the other belts, which could be problematic, but, you know, get the rest of your belts up. But... You have a great title as your mid-card title, and it wouldn't be plagued by this whole X Division thing. Listen, that whole concept of the X Division, it reeks of the 90s. It reeks of the Attitude Era, where again, the top of the card was, you know, Steve Austin, you know, Sting, Hulk Hogan, um, The Rock, all those guys. And so you would put the cruiserweights on first. It was a way of segmenting the show and just saying, hey, you're going to see something different in these particular, uh, with these particular guys. But again, the wrestling business has changed. That's all the guys now. Even the big guys like Moose and like Brian Cage, they wrestle that same style. 
So it's time to stop trying to hold on to the X Division. Stop trying to revive the X Division. Stop trying to, you know, slowly rebrand it. It's not about weight limits. It's about no limits. Like, no, just let it go. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. Okay, let the X Division go. It's a concept that is passe. It's for a days gone. It's for days gone by. Rebrand that championship as. Uh, the total non-stop action championship bring out that beautiful TNA belt the same one that Bobby Roode had that he carried for like 200 days or something like that same one that Austin Aries had that Bully Ray had that Jeff Hardy had okay use the great belt change the mid-card title to the total non-stop action championship and just get rid of this X Division thing because it's over it's over for the X Division. The X Division was nice. It was a nice concept. It birthed a lot of great talent, but it's over. It's over and done, and it's just time to move on. Oh,